Hello and welcome to a well way overdue art tips and life flips. This is your host, Neil Fierushij, and today I'm answering questions. We're kicking it old school. I'm recording this at 4 a.m. just like I used to do, all whispering and stuff like, you know, what's going on? Yeah, doing it like that again. So, <laughs> kind of happy. This is, this is fun. I like this. We haven't started yet. Okay, I'm going to just get off that now real quick. No, um, I have two announcements before we get started. One of them is that, and I told you I would tell you this in the next video that I did, and I guess it's been a while, so. <laughs> I have finally made my second channel. Um, I will link it down below, but it is called Siege Breathes. It took me a while to come up with this damn name, but I finally came up with it, like Siege Breathes Art. Siege Breathes Life. You know, when you're passionate about something, also breath your life, you know. The, I don't need to explain this to you guys. You know what I'm talking about. It, I thought it was a cool name. Although somebody on Instagram said that they thought I was releasing my new fragrance, which uh, cracked me up. So anyways, go over there, subscribe to my new channel. I'm going to be updating it a lot, especially when I get to Japan. I'll explain some stuff to you on that channel soon. Yeah, so hopefully y'all like that stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Alright, and the second piece of news is actually for someone from the fam, you know, the, the, like, the, I mean, that's you guys, this is the family, right, the subscribers, okay, yeah, and her name is Yukin Princess, and you might have seen her name because she's been, on, like, she commented on pretty much every video I've ever made, very supportive, and so I wanted to be supportive back and give a shout out because she has a book coming out. Yep, some of, my, some of my audience are writers. I got to read a snippet from it, and it is really good, guys. Like, I'm not, like, I wouldn't promote it to you guys if I didn't think it was actually good. And I'm going to be buying it and reading it as soon as I can. She's actually running an Indiegogo. It's, uh, it's not about, like, making money for the book, per se, but just to get the book in front of people. So, hopefully you guys can go over there. She has a ton of information. She's got some videos. Alright, so I'm gonna put all the links you need in the description. Go over there and go, go. Please, you know, if you can, help support that. Anyways, let's, uh, let's get started. So, I asked you guys, like, a billion years ago to send me some questions to a tumblr that i made called life blips or something like that and some of you guys actually did which is really surprising although if i actually made the video earlier i might have gotten more questions to the, to the channel so i'm going to answer as many as i can so the first question we have is from riku mystery <laughs> all right so let's read this <clears throat> If your laptop is busted and you're still making videos, where do you where do you do the art of your videos? Spare computer, friend? Ooh, okay, so this question is about what happened before. Basically, if you guys don't know, I actually spilt water on my laptop and I was freaking out. I flipped it, threw it in rice. I didn't have that much rice. I just kind of like just threw rice on it, just into the, into the keys and stuff. It didn't really do too much. Um, yeah, but yeah, basically I got lucky. I turned it off and I flipped it over and I got everything out of it so quickly. I was I managed to actually save the bulk of the laptop. The only thing that got fried was the keyboard. But yeah, my laptop still works. Just the keyboard's dead, but I can get a replacement and I haven't because I'm a huge procrastinator as you can tell by the time it's taken me to make this video. Okay, thank you. Hopefully that answers your question. I think it did because that that was the real answer. That was the, that was the truth. Okay. Anonymous asked me can you explain how to how to get a boyfriend or girlfriend with art? Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, this question is silly. No, I can't explain how to get a girlfriend or boyfriend with art. No, you don't. You don't get. You, <laughs> people love doing this. The people love to go about getting like trying to get somebody or impress somebody else with their skills rather than with who they are. And that is the complete wrong way to go about things. You don't want to. Like, if somebody's into you only for what you can provide them on, like, a, like either with money or with skill or with something like that, those are not the people that you want to be with. You don't want to be with someone who's just impressed by, by oh, you're such a good artist, I want to be with them, oh, baby. No, 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 no. You need to write those people off. No, you're done. Sorry, go home, son. You need somebody who wants to be with you because they think that you are interesting regardless of what you do they, they they're they're attracted to your ambition and the fact that you actually do something with your life of course because you don't want to be with somebody who does absolutely nothing or has no ambition or no goals or just nothing i, I mean come on now you got to be with somebody who has some sort of drive but you want to be attracted to that energy of the other person not just their level of skill because if you're attracted to just their level of skill then you're not really attracted to the person 
And what if they decide to switch what they want to do? What if what what if you decide that you're like, okay, I don't want to do art anymore. I'm not feeling it. What's this person going to do? They're just going to be like, oh, well, <laughs> that was the only reason I like you, bitch. Bye. And they're just going to run off and you're going to be all alone. And that is not what you want. So you don't use your art to get someone. You use your art because you like art. Do art for you and work hard be passionate, you know, be a good person, go out there, show the goodness of you, and hopefully you will get somebody, for, well, no, you will get somebody because you are a good person. That's how you get a girlfriend with whatever you do. It doesn't matter how good your skills are, just be a good person at your core and you will attract somebody who's good for you. I mean, you could totally get somebody with art. You could serenade somebody and be like, you know, draw me like your French girl. You know, that could happen. But will you actually get a quality person out of that? Would you get somebody who actually really connects with you? Maybe. Maybe the, the art attracted them at first and they were a quality person. But there's a higher chance that that person's only with you because of your skill. And that is not the solid footing and the solid grounding for... Uh, a, a, a quality relationship or something that you actually want to spend your time in and do we have time for that kind of crap hell nah bro all right so yeah don't want that no all right all right <laughs> yeah hopefully that answered your question and not a bit slow baby next question we're gonna do how do you how do you do the timing effect make it seem like there's several cursors made in a painting i've been waiting for this answer for months <laughs> sorry I'll teach you later um actually it's really really simple and I will actually teach you later I'm gonna make a video showing you guys how I do it it's really simple actually extremely simple but I mostly do that just for you guys I want you guys to have like a more interesting experience when you watch the painting because I've realized with my older videos when I wasn't doing it and this video right now a lot of people just kind of put it on in the background it was just a we don't do most of skull dub all and I'm just like why am I doing the art Ugh. so hopefully you guys uh, still enjoy it and I will make a video for you showing you what I do to ka said um how do you balance the timelessness of pieces or how fast they get done with the responsibilities of life for me i mean art is my job so kind of is the responsibility of my life but i think the best way where the thing that i started doing was i really organized my time so i kind of treated work time as work time so i was just like okay i'm gonna work from this period of time to this period of time then i'm gonna take a break then i'm gonna eat then i'm gonna do other stuff and then i have my own personal time where i got to hang out and then i have time spread out put it in the day for when i actually have to like you know get up stand up exercise all the other stuff and by having a calendar or a set schedule for my day i usually set up my schedule not based on like from one o'clock to four o'clock, I'm gonna only do this, right? And now this day, I'm gonna do that, right? And do that day, what the blood, what the... No, no, no. I set it up so that I was just like, I'm gonna spend three hours doing this, then I'm gonna take a one hour break. I'm gonna spend four hours doing that, one hour break, a two hour break, whatever, right? And then at this time, it's free time and I get to do whatever I want for this many hours. I split it up by hours so that I could always get in things that I needed to do and I could also make time for the work that I had to do and also for the personal artwork that I wanted to do or the personal videos and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's usually what I do. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that actually answered your question because you know, life responsibilities are important. You don't want to just give up on that just because you're doing art all the time because if you're not living life, then you're not making quality art. That's just how I look at it. Don't even argue with me, bro. I'm not even around here to do an argument. Okay. So anyway, so let's get on to the next question. <laughs> How do you draw him? God damn it, the art box. You <laughs> you guys know me too well. I love this. All right, all right, let's see this. Let's see. <clears throat> In all seriousness, how do you find the courage to tell your crush that you like them? I love you. You, you guys, I mean, I know these questions are from ages ago and I should have answered them a really long time ago, but I really like that you asked me these questions because I like answering stuff like this. This is great. Mm, I should do more videos. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys remember a few videos back, I actually told you guys about the five second rule that I used to do for every single situation and also how I did this when I started going out. That actually works. And I know people are just like, well, how are you going to do the five second only for food and you drop food on it? No, no, no. Okay, look, the way this five second rule works is that you tell yourself you've got to do something and you make it like you pretty much make like uh, make it seem like if you don't do it, you'll die. <laughs> 
so you you make the downside to not doing this thing so catastrophic that you like anything else outside of doing that it, it seems ridiculous like it's, you might as well do it because if you don't you're gonna die and this is all a mental thing okay so in your head obviously you're not gonna really die but in your head you're just like okay i have five seconds and you kind of put that timer on yourself and it's a countdown and there's nothing else you can do right like you have to do this thing in that five seconds or else you're screwed like you're done right so you go okay four three okay go and you jump in and you just do what you got to do now if you're asking me how to because because you're asking how to find the courage to do it i, I expect you already know you already want to do it and I, or maybe you've already done it <laughs> sorry for taking so long uh, sorry yeah, hopefully this person's still your crush but anybody else who's had a crush and they want to tell them my advice is i mean i know people say this and it sounds really stupid but you just like do the five second rule yep okay but you have to do it <laughs> having a crush i mean okay there are multiple ways to approach a person okay because you can totally you know there's a subtle approach and then there's a direct approach i'm a very direct person because i don't have time to waste on this subtlety crap son so I, I i really do not like the subtle approach it's annoying but i think regardless of which approach you take you still need to be very direct with how you feel if you hide your emotions and you hide your feelings and you try to be like well it all up inside and whatever and then you just like surprise i really like you like crazy and and i love you and i hope we can be together forever and maybe we can have 15 babies together and i would just really want okay that's called overwhelming too much information most people even if they liked you back might say no because that's just too much and that's the problem with crushes is that you blow up the other person in your head to a point where they're mystical magical beings that are so far above you that you can't even speak properly when you're in the presence remember everybody is a human being just like you they have flaws they poop they poop a lot and they make mistakes so you don't need to be courageous to do it you just have to believe in yourself and you have to you have to understand that if you don't do it if you don't do it now at this time when you feel like you should then you're probably gonna keep putting it off so you might as well get it over with all right now the thing that i do and well i can't say i do because <laughs> i don't need to do it no more <laughs> i'm sorry the thing that i did was that i never had a crush to diamond okay no no, no. I, had a cr I had crushes but the way the way that i went about it was that it wasn't just a crush because when i think about a crush it's always just like oh that's my secret crush nobody knows about it uh, or your friends only know but you know you don't want to you don't want to tell them and i mean i mean see for me if i was into somebody they knew right away they knew because i was very direct i'm just like i'm not keeping this a secret and even my buddy who was very not indirect per se but he wasn't as like hey girl look what's up i like you son and you know and i call girls son and bro so you know you, in case you guys forgot but um yeah so he was he you know he wasn't like that he was very subtle with the things but the way he was was that his actions showed the person okay i'm interested in you and we and for me i did the same thing my actions are and words though because i'm more direct were just like hey i like you right away and <laughs> that gives the person i mean obviously you know you get to know each other and all that other good stuff right but then you're very direct with how you are because you don't want them because you know that the thing that people talk about the friend zone and stuff like that well it's really easy to not fall in there uh, I mean, I understand people are like, the friend zone doesn't exist, it's just you were rejected because they don't like you like that and they don't deserve and they don't owe you anything. And if you feel like you owe something, then you are a misogynist, mis, mis, misandry, misogynist, mis, I can't say that goddamn word. <laughs> misogynist. We're not talking about that for a second there you don't have to fall into that because you can kind of find out from the beginning but not right at the beginning obviously you want to become friends to a degree but you kind of set the frame in a different light you're kind of like hey i met this person she seems she or he i'm sorry seems very interesting 
and I would like to know them a bit more because when you meet somebody sometimes they are just your friends right and then feelings develop and I think when those feelings start to develop the worst thing you can do is hide them I think you need to be very honest to yourself and let things progress naturally if you just dump something on someone it's overwhelming and they can't handle it they can't think about it and they feel pressured and there's a higher chance for them to be like no 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 even if they did want to give you a bit of a chance it can be overwhelming and if somebody who's an old friend or something like that comes and dumps this stuff all on them and stuff then it's kind of hard for them to process it especially when it's super quick which is what a lot of us friends will do we're just like by the way, I really like you and I don't know what to do. And they're just like, oh my God, because now they're like, I have to make a decision. But if you let it happen naturally, if you slowly start releasing this whole, like, I'm into you, I like you, you don't have to say it, but if you're releasing this, like you're kind of giving them the sign, I like you, I like you, I like you, there's a higher chance for them to show you whether they like you too. And if they're not into you and you are still their friends, you can back off. <laughs> You can take it. I've done it in the past. It really works. You can take the L. I, I learned that from World Star Hip Hop. Yes, I'm so cool. And you can be like, okay, you know what? I'm a decent human being. I'm not gonna force myself on a person who is not compatible with me. Also, there are many fish in the sea. And that is that is a true statement because as much as you think that, that one person is the only person for you, that is wrong. There are thousands of people who are compatible with you. And if you lose one, you can find another as much as it sucks. Everybody is an individual, of course, and you'll never find another person exactly like the person that you've lost. But if the person wasn't meant to be and you weren't supposed to be together because you, you know, one of you doesn't like the other person and the balance is off, you can also, you can actually find another person who has all the qualities that you need, not that you know that you need, but the qualities that you don't know that you need. And you can be with that person and they can make you happy forever and you can make babies and you can get married and you can go on a vacation to Cuba and your honeymoon will be in Paris and unless you live in Paris and then your honeymoon will be in Cuba and then you guys will live happily ever after in a freaking beach house. Okay, and um, okay, now I have two questions from um, Corona Borellis. So Corona Borellis, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name properly, I'm sorry. I apologize if I am not. Anyways, um, this one was actually more recent, which is awesome. And uh, hey Siege, I suppose I'm the first person to ask a question. <laughs> eh, not exactly? Yeah. What do you do when you can't, can't get more time for learning and working? Because of high school, I only have about three to four hours to paint per day. And often I have to work on homework during those. Hmm. Okay, so I guess it's back to the same uh, Steam question that I got from before the same answer I gave before um, basically yeah the same thing you just have to really clock your 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 hours I mean three to four hours per day is okay I think especially when you are packed with other stuff you want that you got to do I, mean, I know some people say you know oh, just drawing class but if you're actually enjoying what you're learning in class you might not want to do that and just take the time that you have if you can get in more hours on the weekends or on holidays i mean we got christmas coming up soon so i know you're gonna be going on on break soon you know paint your days away you know study up learn up you know and also remember that art is not 100 percent just drawing it's also understanding and seeing so the more stuff that you're learning in class like if you have history class for instance or if you're uh, you know geography or science any actually okay every single class you have except for math math sucks will teach you okay no you can actually learn a lot about stuff in math a lot Okay. But yeah, so pretty much every class that you have is going to be teaching you things that you can directly or indirectly apply to your art. You just need to be thinking about it in a creative way because art is representation of life. And the more experience of life and more understanding you have of life overall, the better your pieces are going to be, the more deep your meanings and the better representation and the better the better uh, that you'll be able to express that. I mean, either through abstract or or uh, represent representational art, you'll be able to express that in a better way, which would make you better, which would make everybody be all like, oh my God, Corona, what the hell? How'd you get so damn good, yo? And you'd be like, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, that would happen with all of your friends they'll love you forever but yeah so basically yeah i mean even though you'd only have that three or four hours to actually paint physically you can be using the rest of that time to study up i i said this before in an older video i used to walk down the street and i used to look straight up at the clouds and it wasn't because i was high <laughs> 
and I was imagining myself on the class. No, it was not that this time. It was because I was studying them. I was looking at them. I was like, how is the light bouncing off of them? How, how, how do they exist? Oh, I know this stuff from class. I understand how clouds are formed, but why do they look like they like they do? Um, and then later on, when I went to draw them, I was just like, I can un kind of understand them because I have a full understanding of the clouds themselves, not just, oh, this is how a cloud is drawn. Let me just watch a tutorial on it. Because you can't get everything from a tutorial and you also can't add deeper meaning when everything you have is just how to draw something. It's Art is about how to understand you're telling a story of some type and the deeper your story is sometimes and, and also if you want to tell a deep type of story you want to tell a more abstract story something that you have to look deeper into to understand you need to have a deeper understanding of those subjects so in class whatever you're learning you can apply it if there's something in class that you really are interested in outside of art or art history itself, you can also apply that into your art, okay? So remember that. Have an open mind in school. Learn about everything. Dream, dream. Okay, I'm done. All right, and for your last question, you said, I draw during classes, but I really feel it helps me improve, and the hours in which I learn aren't enough to keep me going. Well, I kind of answered part of that with the with the question for your first ask. Uh, why am I calling it that? I mean, I guess this is an ask. Yeah, this is the ask. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, so that's that's really it. I mean, I think like your hand will take its time. Will take a bit to to catch up with your eye, and so that's what that's what the drawing will be about. But the deeper your understanding, the more you can do. I mean, being technically savvy is always a good thing, but I think it comes down to more of what you know and how you apply it. It's more to that confidence in your lines rather than in the skill behind the the, the the application like even if even if you could draw literally perfect anatomy like I'm talking about like your work should be in one of those medical books it would just be an empty drawing of perfect anatomy you know if you can draw the most perfect bird ever and you know all the details to a bird's anatomy and whatnot it would just be an empty drawing of a bird. Sure, some people would like it. Probably a lot of artists would be like, wow, that looks great. I love the application. Oh my God. But if you want to actually tell stories or share a message or show something with that work down the road, you need to have an understanding of other things. And those things you can learn without actually using, without actually drawing, you can learn those things. I heard that, um, that, and I'm not sure if it's true, but you know, it could be, and I've seen other artists that do this, but I heard that Kim Jong Gi actually, well, I mean, he at least he used to just look at magazines, uh, usually about like uh, mechanics, and he would just look at them and look at the pictures, and he'd just be studying with his eye, and then he'd go to apply it. Now, I understand that not everybody has a photo memory. But that's not what it's about. It's about understanding. The more you understand, the more you can do, you can draw it. Okay, so understand life, and then try to represent that in your work. Try to grow more with your mind, and try to grow your ideas more than trying to grow just your technical skill. I think your technical skill will catch up as long as you keep applying it and you keep working on on things that are harder to you and okay and also using reference and whatnot will help you to do to do it but i think the hardest thing for people to do and to, for people to draw uh and and the hardest thing for people to advance is their creativity and so nurture that now you know you're in high school you still got it whereas somebody who's older might have a bit harder of a time tapping back into that you know, you're still young enough to be like, okay, I can really be creative or be crazy and not have people think I'm crazy. Because me, right now, as an adult, people are kind of like, <laughs> why do you act like a kid all the time? I'm like, shut up, I will kill you. And, you know, and that gets dangerous because they can take me to jail for saying things like that. You know, th that's a death threat. And um, that's, you know, that's against the law. Um, okay, I think it's time for me to go. Anyways, um... <laughs> sorry uh i know this video is a bit longer than usual hopefully you guys watched all the way through and uh hopefully you guys enjoyed it i'm gonna go now i gotta get back like i gotta clean 
and I gotta go buy some stuff and I gotta pack and I gotta figure out what my weight limit is because I haven't even looked that up and I'm gonna start making some videos for the other channel because it's gonna be dope son we're gonna be doing some real stuff it. the first thing I'm doing when I get to Japan is I'm eating natto because I know you guys like to watch me suffer so <laughs> you guys love watching me suffer you're the worst I don't even know what to expect I'm petrified a little bit but you know whatever you know I'm, I, this is what I do for you guys you know what I'm saying I love the kids so yeah I'm gonna be doing that right when I get there and um, ugh, god damn it I'm gonna give you guys a video of the journey of course so you're gonna get a how to get to Japan video and I'm gonna be putting that up soon and I hope you guys will enjoy it I hope you guys enjoy the other channel don't forget to subscribe the link is in the description and it's on the screen right here you guys can go over to my other channel and subscribe siege breathes and again, like I said at the beginning of the video, please do go and check out my friend and our family members, uh, Indiegogo, and go and support if you can. Anyways, I'm gone. I gotta, I gotta go, bro. I'm so busy. <clears throat> God damn. Hopefully you guys like this. Please do go over and subscribe to my other channel. I need more subscribers. I got 22. All right. Anyways, I'm done. Peace out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm done. All right. Bye. You know what that sound is. Oh yeah!